You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, you're calling this a strategic move by the Manhattan DA to neutralize Trump ahead of his criminal trial in New York. That's the first criminal trial that he'll be contending with. Can you speak on what uh, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg just did? Yeah, so this makes me long for my trial days. There's so much strategy, Brian, that goes into the prosecution not only preparing its case, but trying to defeat the defendant's case even in advance of trial. So here's what just happened. Donald Trump's longtime chief financial officer, CFO, Alan Weisselberg, was sent back to Rikers Island, back to jail on Wednesday. Why? Because he was prosecuted a second time by District Attorney Alvin Bragg. You may remember the first time was when the Trump Organization was being prosecuted for being involved in a 15-year-long criminal scheme to defraud in the first degree. As part of that investigation, Alan Weisselberg pleaded guilty to being involved in that 15-year-long criminal scheme to defraud, and he was convicted pursuant to his guilty plea, and he was sent to Rikers Island, where he was to serve a five-month sentence. He got out, uh, I think, at 100 days for um, some credit for good time. But you would think that would make Alan Weisselberg learn his lesson, but no. Alan Weisselberg finished up that, that sentence. He then was called as a witness at Donald Trump's New York fraud trial, and he lied. He committed perjury, lied under oath, which um, in part had the, the impact of trying to help Donald Trump get away with some of his fraud. Now, Alan Weisselberg has never flipped on Donald Trump. He has never been willing to talk about or testify about the crimes of his boss and benefactor, Donald Trump, right? So the prosecution can't possibly put Alan Weisselberg on the stand to say right. anything about this conversation with Michael Cohen because he's a great big liar, right? However, the defense could call Alan Weisselberg to say, wait a minute, I never had that conversation with Michael Cohen in an effort to knock down one of the star witnesses, Michael Cohen. But now, Alan Weisselberg is in Rikers. So if he's, Alan he's Weisselberg a, he's were- a proven, He's a proven perjurer. He's gonna be sitting there in a prison jumpsuit. What, what, Absolutely. What, um... <laughs> and mind you, Brian, I've called witnesses in prison jumpsuits quite often when they were cooperating witnesses, they right. were serving time for what they did. They flipped and they agreed to testify truthfully and I could corroborate the truth and accuracy of their testimony. That's the only way I would call them. But now let Donald Trump's lawyers try to call Alan Weisselberg to help Donald Trump out. He'll be coming over from Rikers in a jumpsuit. Plus <laughs> he's now a two time convicted felon once yeah for you know, committing all kinds of crimes as the CFO for the Trump Organization, but even more importantly, lying at Donald Trump's prior fraud trial trying to help him out. So if people will excuse my indelicate language just this once, Alan Weisselberg's credibility is lower than whale shit. It doesn't get any lower, right? So I, I see this whole perjury prosecution as a bit of a justice twofer. It's great that he's being held accountable for the perjury that he engaged in, but it's also good because he has been neutralized and he can't possibly now be called as a credible defense witness at Donald Trump's trial. Alan Weisselberg is such a striking figure in all of this, but to date, he has still yet to testify against Donald Trump, and that is what makes him so striking. He already spent 100 days at the Rikers Island jail complex in part of the tax scheme in which he took uh, perks from the Trump Organization. And during that trial, he testified against the Trump Organization, but not Donald Trump. Now, fast forward, this has everything to do with his testimony related to the civil fraud trial over the repeated financial fraud claims that were made last year and what he has already admitted to the court is is that he perjured himself by lying about the extent to what, what he knew about the valuation of donald trump's penthouse here in midtown manhattan and so we are looking at him being potentially sentenced up to five months in prison but as part of this plea agreement he did not have to commit to testifying in the hush money payment case so again we see alan weisselberg this key figure for more than 50 years to the trump organization not directly testifying 
testifying against Donald Trump. Yet at the same time, you go back and you're talking about Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen says the one other person that heard Donald Trump directly tell him in 2016 to go and set up that uh, financial arrangement with Stormy Daniels was Alan Weisselberg. And so part of the struggle with the trial is if you don't have Alan Weisselberg agreeing to testify and instead going out to Rikers Jail at the age of 77 years old, mm -hmm. that is a difficult witness here and somebody who is clearly agreeing to stand on the side of his old boss and willing to go to jail instead of truthfully testifying against him. And so now, basically, the jury will have to rely on Michael Cohen's testimony without any what would be an inevitable rebuttal by Alan Weisselberg, who has proven that he's always willing to back up Donald Trump no matter the cost. Exactly. And the prosecutors have so much corroboration, supporting and affirming evidence that will show Michael Cohen to be a truth teller. For example, Michael Cohen made these payments at the direction of and for the benefit of Donald Trump. And then what did Donald Trump do? He started writing Michael Cohen reimbursement checks to pay him back. And in fact, he was writing those checks out of the Oval Office after he was elected as president. So there's lots of hard corroboration that will enable the jury to credit Michael Cohen's testimony because it will be supported in a number of ways. Now, just one one quick side note here. I know that we had spoken about the prospect of Trump attempting to delay this trial by invoking presidential immunity. That's obviously what happened in the D.C. prosecution, and it's what they're seeking to have happen here in the Manhattan trial as well. Would the fact that he was writing these reimbursement checks from the Oval Office be enough of a predicate to be able to have presidential immunity apply? Because the bulk of this crime actually committed was committed while he was a candidate for office, not president. But... If he was writing these reimbursement checks while he was president, then does that give him enough of a predicate to be able to, to basically invoke presidential immunity? It gives him less than zero, and here's why. First of all, presidential immunity against prosecution is not a thing. No court has ever said it actually exists. We understand the Supreme Court has that issue in their hot little hands now. But in the unlikely event, they say there is some minimal presidential immunity kind of around the edges at the outer perimeter of a president's official acts, there's no way that writing reimbursement checks for these hush money payments <laughs> that were designed in the first instance to gain unfair advantage in a presidential election, those would not be official acts of a president, not at the outer perimeter, not at the inner perimeter, nowhere. So you know what, presidential immunity, one way or the other, regardless of what the Supreme Court might say, these acts would not qualify. All right. Well, I mean, it, it really is a sign of the times that this is a question we're asking, whether whether a non-existent premise of presidential immunity to cover a president from criminal activity would count if he was writing his own reimbursement checks for campaign violations from the Oval Office. I mean, it is just insanity on top of insanity. And yet, thanks to Donald Trump, here we are. Uh, with that said, uh, we will follow along with this case as it continues to progress and hopefully ends up in trial starting on Monday, April 15th, as it's expected to do. So for those watching right now, if you want to follow along, please make sure to subscribe. The links to both of our channels are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.